fight We don't have to kill Everybody in the whole wide world Really just needs to chill No, we don't Okay, so we are so, going. Um, welcome to Just Chill. I am Oliver George, and unlike last time, we've actually remembered to turn on the on the air. On the air. If you're watching this on the video version of this podcast, if it's uh, there. if you're and, watching or listening rather only, then you won't know what the fuck we're talking about. And, yeah, and listeners, uh, there's a lot of very cool, uh, nerdy, and eclectic stuff around the walls here. Uh, it speaks to every part of my nerd. Uh, I've honestly tried to put, there's a few things that aren't even like, you You probably wouldn't appeal to you, like little things for just for my life. I, I felt like some sort of feng shui, if I surrounded myself with little pieces of my life, that it would just be a really natural environment for me, if that makes any sense. No, 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 it's totally, totally sense. You uh, create your, what you, what hits, oh man, it's one of Yo, the, that's the second CD. Chili Pepper album I've like ever bought. First was Blood Sugar Sex Magic, because that, I was like 12. What Hits is like a out. compilation though. Yeah, I know, their, like, but, yeah, yeah. like the next album I bought after What Hits, I bought Mother's, Mother's Milk. Milk. Yeah, yeah 89, then, right? 89, yeah. yeah, and then I bought, uh. Uh, they're self-titled, so I had like self. When did they have a self-titled? It's it's uh, or it's uplip. Oh mofo no no you're right you're right yeah yeah self-titled old, old. uplip mofo mother's milk. Okay, you're talking about the first album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. some of their album. old shit. I'm kind of meh. This this is kind of where I thought they started getting really good. Was what? Hits. Yeah, but a lot of that stuff is on mother's milk and uplip mofo. True. Right? So oh yeah, the two true. albums are like yeah. are pretty awesome. And then uh, I still like the Chili Peppers. Oh, I think sure. they're a lot more like they have a formula now. They follow they a lot more. Yeah. And I think Kedis's inane lyrics bother me a little more now. Because I'm just yeah. like, you just rhyme shit that makes no sense. Like, Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they're still incredible to watch on stage. Oh, yeah, and, I've seen them twice, yeah. Yeah, I've uh, seen them three times now, and the first time was in... Uh, More of a fan. Yeah, well, no, that's just, <laughs> just how it happened. But uh, the first time I ever saw them was in uh, 2003 in Edmonton, and okay. they hadn't been there in over 15 years. So people were going nuts. And, yeah, and they had it on a Sunday, They uh, and they... Also shut the bars down at a certain time, and then they were playing. They were uh, being very conscious of how they were controlling the audience with songs. Okay. They would start playing licks from like certain covers, and then see how people would respond to it. And that's how they would play their next little set. Yeah, because some crowds are kind of like they want just the big hits, and then yeah, other ones I, want you to dig deep and play like. I weird... remember hearing about them talking uh, how bad they felt about uh, what happened at Woodstock '99. And how they were respond, they felt they even though they're not Limp responsible. Limp Biscuit and Corn and whoever the that harder was a bands. Saturday, were right? They closed it on the Sunday yeah. with fire, right? Yeah. An ode to Hendrix. But those and then fires they started fires. There are people like they felt oh, like as true. much yeah, as yeah. much as they weren't responsible for other people's actions, they were responsible as controlling people's emotion and tone. So from then, and mentioning the word fire, and, and, well, not, yeah, Hendrix is fire. It's, yeah, it's, it's true. Fuck. Like don't light shit on fire. Don't light shit on fire. We're not gonna yeah. light shit on fire. And it was just the temple of the crowd, right? I mean. I'd but wait, that was off. Sunday night that they close it out? Yeah. I thought the fires had been started the night before with the Limp for sure. shit. And girls were getting raped yeah, and all this horrible shit. Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, yeah. lot of acts of violence on the Saturday. And for that to be, like, commemorating what was <laughs> once, like, this peaceful congregation yeah. of, like... We were just talking about... Yeah, the, yeah, the new doc, the yeah. The new doc. Go check that one out on... on uh, I only watched, like, uh, 45 minutes because it was, like, 3 in the morning. I had to call it quits. Yeah, no, fair it enough. It was uh, fucking uh, amazing. Finish it out and props to that documentary. Check it out. Have you yeah. seen the old, like, Woodstock? Um, there was one that won an Oscar and shit back in the day, right? It was, like... a. Sort of a documentary. This one is more docu, like the new one, yeah. is more like really digging deep into behind the scenes. That one was more just, hey, here's what we filmed yeah. of Woodstock. That'd you know? cool. No, I haven't checked that out. That's for sure. You've I, seen that, eh? Yeah, yeah, my dad's seen that. I knew it. That's good. Um, cool. Okay, so one thing um, I was going to say, we were talking about this. You do have a podcast as well with yes, uh, another comedian locally, and Matthew Champ is his name, and he's a great guy. Yeah, and it's called Daddy Issues with Champ in Kingsbury. And it's, but you've uh, had some technical issues. <laughs> oh, boy, have we. <laughs> <laughs> we were just about to drop episode three, and we were recording episode four that day with uh, local comedian Josh Williams. And great guy. Uh, yeah, great he came guy. up on the last podcast, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Josh is a great guy, and... We had a table double stacked and we had beers on top and our MacBook decided to drink a beer. And oh, then it was shit. like redlined and Mac was like, it's fucked. And then we got it back from them and we're trying to do a data recovery. So at least we can have the episode with Rodney Ramsey oh, shit. Uh, that was ready to drop on that Sunday. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and you must feel bad to that guy. too. Oh, You're like, totally. Fuck, we're man. just like, oh, do I, why has it got to happen to the brother? That's not crazy. Yeah. That's not cool. He came out for like yeah, a, an it, afternoon it, or something. It, totally an afternoon. Yeah. And it was a great conversation about swearing. And the whole podcast premise is that uh, we're, we're both dads. Uh, 
and we're just figuring things out and we're talking about issues that fathers come up with together. When well, you were telling me that uh, something I didn't know. Um, oh yeah, by the way, shout out to Chris who's here for doing the baseboards. <laughs> yeah, you contributed yeah. to this uh, yeah, podcast. Yeah, a little bit of the. I don't want to say the finishing touches, but that's kind of what I did. Was, yeah. Oh no, we needed it, and you came in a pinch, so it was really good, man. Thanks. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is, when we were chatting that day, you told me about how Champ is like a psychologist or something. Yeah, he's or? a registered psychotherapist. Oh, cool. Uh, so, and then I'm just like a dad of two and a tradesman. So, uh, you know. Do you find him psychoanalyzing you like often? No. No. No, he's not like that. Not at don't all. Don't take your work no, home, I guess. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, definitely not. It's. Uh, he, He's uh, brought the show to a very self-help area, right? As opposed to just uh, having uh, us talk about our issues. He's brought up these things and these questions that he had as, as becoming a new father and as well that need to be addressed in the psychotherapy world. Okay. Right? So uh, that's it's one part uh, self-help and then it's another part fun and it's all beer and healing really nice yeah so and, and just things that come up naturally with kids and you just met him on the scene i'm guessing or yeah i've been friends with champ uh good five years now i remember this is weird actually i remember seeing him years ago when yeah. i was just debating like oh can i do this like i was going to a lot of amateur nights and stuff like that and i'm pretty sure he was just starting out it's sort of like five years ago six years ago or something and um he told a joke this is why i say it's weird because there is the beast on the table here for the camera yeah it's uh, Hank McCoy over here and um, he told a joke about Beast and that was like actually something that really stuck with me because I'm a big geek and I was like oh you can make jokes about like comic books and shit and like I know that seems like a very obvious yeah, thing but, but like that dawning moment was kind of cool for me where I was like just talk about your shit you know yeah yeah well that's it comedy is just talking about where you come from and but a lot of people don't do that a lot of people no. think comedy is like do what that other guy did or, you know yeah or put your own twist on this formula or mm -hmm. whatnot. but um yeah, like no. it's kind of weird when I'm not saying it has no value, but when people start to break down comedy like it's a science, and, and that's kind of true, but some of it is just random variables and crazy characters, you know, and like it can't be replicated. No, that's true. Some people there's, just have there's raw talent from some people who are just like some got it and some don't, and then others can can uh, learn a cadence and learn to write. You know what I mean? Oh, I've so, heard a lot of comics say that they don't listen to other people's shit too much because they'll start like. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in that same boat too. Like uh, I'll watch the big acts that come out. Like I just watched Chappelle's recent uh, thing that just came out on Monday. But that's the big acts because they're the pinnacle of what's going on. And you just, want to keep abreast of like yeah, you want yeah, to, yeah. You, you, like you don't want to start on a, on a joke that like somebody it's like premise stepping, mm -hmm. you know? Because that's there, fucking hard to avoid. I've yeah, noticed no, too. Totally, like totally, it is hard to avoid, and not even in a huge way. I've never had something where I wrote like, and then I saw somebody else do something really close. But I'm just so paranoid about it that I'll Google everything when I have like a premise, and oftentimes there's enough along the same lines that it can discourage me sometimes from really yeah, no, trying yeah, to make yeah, it my yeah, own or whatever. Yeah. But there's also like a validity to just like certain topics are big enough that it's like everyone kind of has a right yeah, to yeah, fuck exactly. with it, you know? Yeah, no, that's for sure. There's public domain, but it's I think how you make how you get there and how you make it funny that. That's the big no-no to Well, and a lot of people follow, that, I, right? I don't know if we, we might have mentioned this last time too, but a lot of people that um, get caught copying have said it's like uh, crypto, what's it, cryptonesia they yeah. call it, where you like, you steal something subconsciously because- I had it, that happen actually just the other week. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't seem that unbelievable until you start getting really specific with a bit where you're like, okay, but you, you took this turn and this turn, like there's no fucking way you just subconsciously threw that out there, you know? Like what's his name? Mencia was doing a bunch of that, right? Back in the day. Yeah, I don't think that was actually more blatantly uh, just taking just shit. Just ripping people yeah, off. Yeah, just straight ripping Yeah, Rogan called off. him out not, or something. Yeah, not even uh, not even like bringing it to a different way. It was like verbatim. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's... Not coming up naturally how, how in a conversation. How do you think you're going to get away with that? That's my fucking question. Yeah, it's, like, that's it's like the kid who plagiarizes like Shakespeare at school or something. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I wrote this. You yeah. know, to be or not to be. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. good, right? Right, like, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, I am going to light this joint, which is kind of cool, because uh, I vaped last time, but we did not smoke. So this is the christening of the... I mean, I've, I've smoked down here before, but... <laughs> <laughs> this never, is the first time on air. <laughs> never while interviewing. For our American viewers, I guess it's not super huge for you, because you see Joe Rogan do it all the time. Uh, Actually, this is kind of a nice segue, though, since I am lighting drugs, if you want to call them that. But um, Oh, they're drugs. You Okay, okay but this is interesting, because one of my questions for you was, um, people obviously may not know this, but Chris had... a hard drug problem in the past, but you surprisingly still do smoke weed and clearly drink beer. And so yeah. that to me is very impressive that not a lot of people can fuck with anything after they go straight and, and you know, clean up their shit. A lot yeah, of people... definitely. Um, 
I think it's just I spent long enough reprogramming reprogramming my computer, which is like your head, your brain, right? And mind over matter, you don't mind. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it, well, to me, again, if someone it, if someone take it. can do what you did, I actually have almost more respect for that because you're not just completely resigning to your demons and being like, oh, they beat me. They're insurmountable. Yeah, no, exactly. No, they're not. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not. I've been recovered from methamphetamine now i'd say full recovery which i consider recovery um if i've been not doing those drugs longer than i was on those drugs oh yeah that's that's your Dude, not not doing them at all for any extended yeah. period of time that's you know enough to i don't know no no, no. there's I, a period of time yeah, yeah. there's a because people are like i'm a recovering a- alcoholic or i'm a recovering this and i'm like well when do you become recovered that was a very mm. big thing for me to be like, I don't want to consider myself fighting this battle all the time. Yeah. And then I looked into it, and Champ actually helped me look into it. He's like, well, I guess you can consider recovery um, if you've been straight and not doing those drugs longer than you were doing those drugs in the past. So I was a functional addict for like seven years. That sort of just sounds like someone's theory, though. Like, uh, no, no, but I mean, like, yeah, no... it took to, made, made sense. Yeah, I've yeah, covered enough, something. Yeah. I've done something what longer hear, than what of. I've... Yeah, for sure. I'm not if it's sure if it's a textbook definition. It seems But it makes point, sense to point. be like, I'm a recovered methamphetamine addict because I haven't had it in my life for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I've surpassed my using time by three years prior to that. So you did it for seven years. Okay, yeah. so what age would you start of... Like, 22. And were you like... Uh, was? Was weed, I don't want to say this, but was weed like a gateway drug for you? Yeah, I was bored with weed. Okay, fair enough. I was enough. drunk as fuck. And uh, one of my uh, like restaurant buddies I was working with, he's like, come on, we're going back to my place, my video games. I'm like, cool, how are we going to stay up? And he's like, no problem. And we did it there. And it was like, it wasn't the first. I wasn't hooked off the first. It was probably like the second time where I was like, yeah, I think I could do this more often. Because legitimately, I went from, passing out drunk to like fun euphoric video games for the next eight hours oh the sun's up holy crap oh shit better go home because it's like <coughs> speed basically right it just gives Not you speed it's it is a, speed it's yeah speed. okay yeah um um shit man so okay so how do you then once you've sort of like conquered all that shit how do you did you just never stop drinking and smoking weed or is it something you came back to after you had kind of like cleared? It's, a, it's something i came back to I, uh, you had to go like full yeah, sober for I, a while. When I went full sober, I, I went for at least about a month and a half to like two months of just like, yeah, I don't need any booze. Nah, I don't need any weed. I just need to just kind of reset the body. And I did that for about two two months. The first two months I was here, and then I was ready to like introduce it slowly back into my life. I would have like a drink after I came home from work, mm-hmm. or I would have a smoke with the, the girl I was dating, but not go know, too overboard. But not go too yeah. overboard, and just kind of. Well, and for weed life. especially, it's a great time to be kind of getting back into it because now you can go to an actual <laughs> store and get a much lower THC percentage or just CBD. Like the, most of this yeah, joint Yeah, a lot of the stuff that, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, I'm glad that the government finally came around and said, hey, this isn't just, you know, oh, it's all wrong and horrible, like for somebody Dude. making a fucking choice. And honestly, neither is the hard stuff if you could take it out of the fucking illegal hands and put it into some place that could be monitored and watched, you know what I mean? But they have to cut their teeth on what they're doing with weed first for even them to try to do something like that yeah. with, with harder stuff because they've fucked up. Oh, they're already doing it with shrooms in like Colorado and yeah, uh, California no, exactly. and stuff. And yeah. The money is there to be made. and there's th- a- It's weird, though, because they re-legalize shrooms in, like, Amsterdam where they used to be legal and you could buy them in, like, vending machines and shit. That's what I'd heard recently. I don't know. Let's watch and see what they're all about. Who knows? Yeah. Like, it's uh, I mean, strokes for different folks, right? It blows my mind that I can sit here right now and yeah. smoke a joint, do this podcast, and not have fear when putting it online because only whatever years, five years ago or whatever it was when I first started trying stand-up, I filmed a couple of my sets. I put them on YouTube. And I remember being super fucking paranoid <laughs> even about, like, just anyone in my life that might judge me or like, you know, oh, man. I mean, I'm pretty hardcore about my weed. I don't really care what people think, but I feel almost bad that I haven't released a video on YouTube since like 2008 in my first year of comedy. Same and here. Basically. I, I, I did that at first to be like, look, I've been doing it. And then I was all like, yeah, but if, if I really want to enjoy the art and if I want people to enjoy the art, half of it's like, come out to a fucking show yeah right there's that balance like not only that but like i get paranoid like what if you have a great joke you put online someone jacks it because they know you're a nobody and they're probably not gonna like you're not gonna find out that they stole your shit because they live in seattle and maybe they take your joke and 
run well, with it, you know? Uh, yeah, see, I wonder about, like, some of the, the comics that travel through here. Like, you know how they say there's uh, – in travel, they don't want you to bring back fruits and vegetables and things like that. Well, fucking, what about the stuff that you're, you know, what you hear in the club? Intellectual property. Intellectual yeah, yeah. property, you know, like, yeah. and then just tweak it slightly, and then all of a sudden you're like. That's uh, kind of what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's even more accessible if it's online and anyone in the fucking world can, you well, know. Well, yeah. But at the same time, you see other people that rocking fits. social media and it clearly working, so you, you're like, okay, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do. I don't know. Ah, uh, I. <laughs> I think it'd be better to brand yourself as a young enough upper comic. And I'm still trying to do that in a better means myself. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it quite a while. And by branding, I mean like having your own website with your own links to your own like SoundCloud to be able to to find easy easy to 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 access your material. Like here it is. And you post a link and you're posting actually like to chriskingsbury.com. And then through that is, is your player. You could do that with like Wix and shit pretty easy these days, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, you know, if I had the time being a dad and all and, uh, Providing oh, yeah. a for a family of five. It's a it's an interesting. No, I, I hear that. Crap. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But brand yourself better. Don't just put it on YouTube for the clicks and the hopes, and just like, yeah. have your own website. Uh, if you want to like bring it to like a donations page, don't ask for the money. Just be like, well, whatever donations, and you can watch the video. You yeah. know what I mean? And and yeah, I had a GoFundMe once for uh, um, I made a song and people dug it enough. And then uh, I kind of wanted to do more, but it was pretty expensive for the studio time. So I, I, and I got like 40 bucks and it made me go like, oh, everyone hates me. Cool. You know, but (laughs) it's not like everyone's so fucking. It's it's on a scale. People would much rather spend money on huge things than support local artists and that's why oh yeah like i wasn't mad offended and it's no. more just everyone's got their own shit going on i think it's just a thing about life now is everyone is so not self-absorbed but kind of in a way yeah. not in the in the old way you would have said that but now just like it's like forced almost because we all live in our fucking phones and i don't know man social media and all that that machine is just kind of weirding me out every year a little bit more you think <laughs> yeah. I know, but it's weird because it kind of gets in you like a virus or what something. It, what's that meme that's out there? It's like uh, uh, Orwell didn't realize that we'd have Big Brother right in our hands. Oh, interesting. And want it in Big Brother right in our hands, right? We always thought it'd be a far away. It's trying to get to us. Exactly. We're like, no, we're popular. It's it, it's right here. It needs to be right here. We're just giving it up. Man, it's weird. Yeah, that is weird because that's true. The fear was always like we were being persecuted and, and watched, and, and, like, and that could also be true. It. That could also still with drones and shit. That could be a reality as well. But Not, I yeah. see what you're saying. Most people are now like, oh, here's me. Here's all my information. Here's pictures of my kids. Here's, and now you know what's freaking me out. And I know you're freaked out about this, but um, the face shit they're doing where they can make you look well, the like algorithm. They'll Not make you look like Bill shifting. Clinton. Yeah, make you face shift, but like. I the games that pop up out in social media that are like, hey, let's do the aging app. I'm like, you just gave an app from something. You give the, the Russians world. your you fucking gave the Russians yeah. privacy to your data. Okay, you just gave another company there for sure. I'm just like, also that don't kid yourself. All those facial recognition softwares are, are compiling to somewhere in Google. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, yeah. mass. But people cloud. go, oh well, Google, but that's American, so we're cool. No, no, we're, we're safe. It's global. You got to think. Oh, it's just in America. Yeah, no, that's where the server is, hun. Well, but, the internet is just so connected. Like, if you know what you're doing, I'm sure you can get on anyone's fucking computer. Like, if you're, like, a, a hacker or some shit. Yeah, or, okay, maybe not anyone's, sure. but, like, no, but, you know, the, the average person who doesn't have crazy firewalls and isn't, like, mad protected, if for some reason wanted to, some hacker wanted to fuck with you, they probably could. Oh, 100%. 100%. I don't know how you piss off a hacker, but... <laughs> Um, okay, so the uh, yeah, the meth addiction was definitely part of what I want to talk to you about because it's just... Yeah, you know, so I'm coming up on... Uh, I'm coming up on 10 years... In uh, September 26 in 2009 is when I landed here. And I officially call that my clean date because I'm not, I don't think I was using the morning of, but I know I didn't use from that point on. Mm. So it might have been a week earlier, but it might have been maybe a couple days earlier. But I call the 26th of September when I landed. It's your here. anniversary, kind of. Yeah. anniversary of landing here. That's important, though. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure, right? You got to. It's monumental. Set a goal line. Yeah. Right? Success is measured by how that kind high of... you bounce after falling flat on your face. Patton. That was one of my favorite quotes, just even before the amphetamines, right? Because to finally put the like foot down, so to speak, and be like, there's my line in the sand. I had about three cycles of like, I'm quitting, I stayed quit, and then I bounced back into it, where I would be like sober for maybe a couple of months and then just just kept going. So yeah, and, then, well, I mean, and then the jumps got bigger, right? So the first jump was like, okay, I had this big freak out with it. There's like a six month thing that I stopped and I was good for like three and a half months. And then I jumped onto it again. And there was like a, 
a, a longer period of time on the drug. Oh, shit. And then it was like a drop again for a little bit of time. Kind of get your shit together. Yeah, right get your shit together. And then popped again. Fuck. And then dropped again. And then popped for a real long time. And then once that was done, I was just like, it's never going to have that kind of duration. I'm never going to have that same feeling. I'm never going to have that apex again. Yeah. And if I continue to stay in Edmonton, I'm never going to give myself the chance I need. You need a clean slate and like a fresh slate, start. Yeah. Right? Well, because if you have people who are going to try to hook you up and shit, for Not sure. Not even necessarily that. It's like, Well, you have an access route, though. I think that is definitely a part of it. For sure. Okay, yeah. You're if you're like, oh, I could call Jimmy it. or whoever, you know, you don't yeah, have yeah, that if no, you're no. fucking hours away and you'd have to take a plane to see Jimmy. You know? Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely. It's smart. It's but fucking... had I really wanted to find it here in Ottawa, I probably, sure, I probably sure could have. But that's I, true. I didn't yeah, want that's, to find that's... it. I knew at this point, I'm like, there's the shoot. See you're it, trying to make done. it harder for yourself. Yeah, 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 exactly. Make it. And I, the first year to two years was like a bus would drive by and I would smell the exhaust and would put my fucking teeth on edge because that exhaust smell. like that? Smell, the exhaust smell is like somebody cleaning out their crystal meth pipe with a torch. And oh, then that, that, that smell is like, what the f-? And it would make my hairs on my body stand up and my eyes huge and then like jesus man yeah it was just weird and that that was still that's a prevalent. weird trigger you probably weren't expecting no, either not right? at all. Like, like, the fuck? fuck you oc transpo not just for <laughs> your fucking other shit but for fucking give me trigger warnings right holy that's shit that's amazing right no so like uh it was weird like that and then there would be other times where you just i'd just be sitting and then all of a sudden it would just i could taste it i could taste it in my mouth and I'm just like, whoa, that's weird. Let's go brush my teeth and like get rid of that instantly. Weird. And that was in the first two years, right? And then right around that time, I had tried uh, someone. I was I went back to cigarettes because I wasn't smoking when I was on amphetamines. Okay, like at all. I just I wanted to pick the poison into my body, and I thought cigarettes were fucking disgusting. Well, and it gives you more money for that shit too. If you're, yeah, that's true. Right? It was like a, a side note. I wasn't worried about money because of the lifestyle I was living, but like it was okay. Well, right? it, okay, is that shit expensive? Meth? Yeah, that's the one thing I don't know. When I first started doing it, because coke it, is expensive. Coke goes, yeah. When I first started doing, not that you, I'm you, like a <laughs> frequent coke user, but <laughs> yeah, no, I know that from when I was one. like eighteen <laughs> and I hung out with a couple of people. Who, you know, uh, when I first started doing it, you could buy an eight ball for one hundred and fifty dollars around eight balls an eighth of an ounce guys an yeah. eighth. there's a half quarter out here in fucking Ontario <laughs> fucking half quarter I'm sorry you're uh, like local drug slang like, pisses no, me man, off I, I can't really half a quarter is an eighth fucking I'm sorry just half a quarter is an eighth guys half a quarter is an eighth yeah anyway eight so ball just that's too much bucks. I never would have bought yeah, that yeah and uh, an eight ball <laughs> would last you like a I whole... get like a marble <laughs> yeah. it would last you like a whole week right because there's points inside of a gram, like so that'd be yeah, like yeah. 350 points and about 10 bucks a head. And then towards the end, when I was buying, it was pretty much like 10 bucks a point. Shit. Yeah, towards okay. the end of it, because people were using it, people enjoyed it that. So much. that sounds pretty expensive then. Yeah, at certain points when there was like a high tide, like in the summer when there wasn't being much produced, it yeah. was like 350. It was it was a commodity. So how were you um, putting that into your budget? I only ask because. Clearly, some people put all their money into that, and that's why they're gross, and they don't have shampoo, and they have scabs all over their body, and like, you know what I mean? Like, were you sound like you kind of were managing it? You were like a functional meth addict to a degree. I, I was definitely a functional, uh, uh, functional junkie for a long period of time. And people weren't on to you, or what? Probably, but I had <laughs> a like, lot of you energy. Were on meth. You I, was out, I was on meth. I was showing up. I was paying my bills. Yeah, I was fucking. So that's holding it together, Dude, yeah, school, kind of. I was, you Weird. know, like getting a car. Did you have like, like the fucked up skin though? That seems to happen. No, a lot. I, I tanned. Oh. I went and tanned. But you didn't pick. Like that's nope, what they do. No, I never get, picked. You just made sure you were high, so you didn't get like a, you know. No, I just was self care enough. Just, okay, does that make sense? Like, I knew that like I couldn't do any meth from a certain period on, and not necessarily be functional for the next day. I would have to like sleep in quotation marks mm, it's like a hangover kind of or something no 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 it's literally like forced meditation you just close your eyes and oh. think of things that you're going to do for the next day and like program your computer because you're not really shutting down your subconscious or your conscious mind mm-hmm. you're just closing your visual cortex so it doesn't fry out and you start seeing shadow people oh shit 
right? You get a lot of hallucinations from that stuff, if, or no? Oh, yeah, that's the sleep deprivation. Oh, uh, okay, You're okay. up past 24 hours, your computer hasn't shut down your visual cortex long enough, so you're starting to, like, see stuff Weird. out of the corners of your eyes. Plus, you have... I've had that on, like, shrooms and shit yeah, when yeah, I was yeah, younger. Yeah, yeah, for sure, but uh, that's more of the hallucinogen coming through, right? Yeah, Not yeah. Not your actual that's brain. That's true, like, yeah. Huh, huh. If you stay up for a long enough period of time, you'll start to hallucinate. I have had, right. especially audio hallucinations when I'm overtired, because I've yeah, worked a lot of... too, because your ears haven't shut down, and that would happen as well, I've sure. done a lot of overnight, so I definitely know the sleep deprivation. There was a point where where I was like working overnight and then I would take care of my kids during the day. So I would literally only sleep during their nap, like two, three hours a day. And I did that for like, I don't know, six months or a year. And then I started going losing my hair and shit. It was pretty fucked up. Sometimes <laughs> I would feel like I was holding a tool in my hand from that day. Oh, weird. But I wasn't. It's kind of like when you go on a roller coaster and then you still feel you like still you're on the roller coaster. Like on a yeah. Roller coaster. Like the same ways now, like I still have like, shadow panes of old teeth that aren't there anymore oh shit so okay what, what's with the teeth in the meth do they just fall out well or you don't take care of your teeth no, you're so because you're so fucking high well first of all i liked sugar and candy before that and these hard drugs don't necessarily change you unless you let them they simply make you more of what you already are okay and i didn't take a lot of great care of my teeth i also had a dealt a shitty genetic hand mm. my grandfather full dentures at 18 my dad full dentures at 21 i have a partial plates now thank god for my mom because that keeps me with the 15 teeth left in my head right yeah so what being awake that long does not only does it shut and fuck with your brain and your visual and your hearing and your feel but it also screws with your body's ability to metabolize uh vitamin d oh, from shit. riboflavin <laughs> so that's why you'll get osteoporosis self regulate like yeah, it's, yeah. you're not re you're not repairing your body right so the Fuck. first thing to get attacked in your teeth cuz usually that's the first thing that's regenerated is all your oh, i didn't know that that's crazy in your mouth and and your brain gets reset it's all going off at once when you sleep right yeah but the first thing to hit is your teeth crazy when your enamel's gone because if it sits on your teeth long enough the meth smoke is very corrosive towards enamel oh well yeah it and smells like bus grinding. fumes you're or whatever grinding grinding your teeth like even when you're sleeping because you're getting the rest of the speed out I, it was i've heard that with like ecstasy and a bunch of yeah. shit too like That's you just the speed you're kind of like Ugh. yeah you're grinding your jaw the more yeah. you're grinding your jaw and you're sweating the more speed you got going in that drug you're taking kitties yeah that's Uncle Chris's tip of the week. <laughs> sure, we'll have a few more. Of those I had that come, once. But... There, I, like I did, uh, I did coke a couple times when I was like eighteen. Yeah. For like maybe two months with a couple of specific friends, and I hit one one night crazy adventure where I ended up with that, where I was like up all night. I went to the river with a friend's brother, and um, and he had all sorts of physical energy. But, but well, we were like walking around in the river with no shoes on and like trying to connect with the earth. But then later in the day, it was fucking brutal because I couldn't sleep. And I think I had to meet my then girlfriend who was like a year younger than me. She was, she was like senior year in high school. Yeah. So I was like going to meet her and I like collapsed on someone's lawn or something. Hot. Yeah, I know. Cool. Hot mess. Literally. Yeah. Hey, man, other people have worse stories, but. I, yeah, that I don't know. Yeah, I went that probably deep, have but three words for that minimum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Right. No, no, no. Oh, and I was like eighteen learns, or seventeen or something like yeah, that. Everybody learns their limits and plays within it, right? Like no, that to me so. was uh, literally. I think I started dating a girl right after that, and I had I was coming out of that shit, and she was like, "Yo, like if we're gonna date, like I that yeah, scares I, me or whatever." And yeah, I was so ready right. to just resign hard drugs in general. I I still fucked with shrooms after that because that was like from the earth, and I never had really. Super bad experience. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with shrooms when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. Generally, it was all positive for me, too. Yeah. I got hurt once. That's why I looked at my dad. There was one time when I was like 15, 16, and I got injured on shrooms because my over-enthusiastic physical buddy started throwing rocks when we were all chilling again at the river. And uh, What did he have against water? What did he water? He was throwing these rocks straight up, and they just progressively got bigger. And then I don't really remember. The time's all jumbled in my head, but like I just remember him looking at me, sitting across from me, and being like, oh, my God, look out. And this like big fucking rock that he had thrown pretty high up landed and like hit me in the collarbone shoulder area, <laughs> area rather. And um, everyone kind of just heard this like rock hitting bone noise. And they're all like <laughs> waiting for me to react. And I was really high. So I was like, am I processing the pain right? But I think I, I kind of went in shock. I got like really sweaty and I started taking off my clothes because I was like, guys, I'm really hot. Like I was, <laughs> yeah, it was just anxiety. I don't know. To your shoulder because you've had your trauma on your yeah. shoulder. <laughs> but I never went to the hospital that night. I ended up, weirdly enough, going... I call my mom to pick me up because I I've always been I'm enough of a mama's boy that if I'm getting fucking injured on shrooms I'm like my mom will help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I probably sure. yelled, but um, that's all right. Um, well, so, I'm just worried about the levels because we're still new at this audio shit, but um, yeah. So my mom picked me up and 
it was like I was a kid again because she took care of me. It was, and we had these fucking deep conversations. And I told her, I was like, Mom, I'm on shrooms. <laughs> we kind of, you need to know that going in. Yeah. <laughs> and she, my mom's a really understanding person who loves me more than she would have been mad at me for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she just cared about like taking care of me at that point. But it was uh, interesting. Anyways, things, back yeah. to the myth. No, um, yeah, back to the myth from Shrooms. <laughs> There's a good segue there somewhere. I would, well, only because so. I had a couple questions when we were on yeah, the meth. Yeah, go um, ahead, man. When you went back far enough, you said uh, you got clean in 2009, yes? Yeah. Okay, so, but it sounded like you started comedy in 2008, so I was wondering, did you ever perform yeah. on meth? Oh, absolutely. Like yes, many times? Many a times. Oh, shit. It was, and, it was and? like hand in hand, like... Some of my, you can tell it's, there's no cadence, there's no slowdown, there's no hot. Like, I'm getting a bit of a laugh and the high off of the amphetamines and the laugh are there. Oh, Some so of you my can't pr- distinguish. No, no, I could. Well, I, after, with distance. But yeah. then, yeah, you couldn't really. I did, you know. Well, I would think you could be like in the moment, like, oh, I'm killing. And everyone's like, maybe not into it because you're just high or whatever. And maybe you just feel like it's going now, better I think than a lot it is. of the old videos on there, I think I'm high in every one of them. Shit, man. Yeah. So, you hardcore Chris Kingsbury fans. <laughs> You just go ahead and uh, you can YouTube that shit. It's there. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it's uh, interesting. And some of the premises that were like, I was all over the place and and being shock edgy, and it wasn't just it just wasn't good writing. I and was, people probably just thought you were drunk or something if you ever like fucked up, right? I don't even know. I don't even know about that. But because uh, comedy and drinking go hand in hand, I think we all know. I probably should have had that drink on stage because uh, drinking and amphetamines, they're like. Good friends because they can take the sketchiness away. <laughs> alcohol, okay. a little Balance bit of alcohol okay. takes yeah. the edge off. Interesting. If that makes any sense. Alcohol yeah. takes the edge off. Damn it! I'm a pilot. No, it I does to, though. Like yeah. if you're on some crazy upper to have a bit of a downer, that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I used to be able to drink like a fish on it. In the service industry, when you have like, you know, booze at cost, uh, being high on amphetamines for a couple of days, and then being able to drink a whole like two six of gin in an hour and two hours. Jesus Christ. Yeah, just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> that would annihilate would, you, man. We'd pick up uh, two flats uh, of beer, so like 48 beer, and walk it the uh, four blocks, and that was like day and a half drinking. Wow. Just done. Yeah. Just you? No, like oh. me and another buddy. So okay. Two, two people, though? Yeah, Holy two people. Fuck, that's still impressive. Yeah, 24 beer and less than like... Less than yeah, how's your liver, bud? <laughs> well, that's the question, right? It's uh, yeah, I wonder, like, good, actually. Do you, do you ever freak out that, like, you did, like, crazy irreparable damage when you were fucking with the hard stuff? No. It, it doesn't work that way? I don't know. I'm not, like... I'm, maybe it does, but I don't... There's no point in dwelling on it, I guess. No. Yeah. You can't... That's undo. not a... That's not your nature. If it happens, it happens, but, like, I just... I the, think the body has its ability to to make itself new again. Right, the to, skin cells, hair scales, and everything. Yeah, it's to like a degree, seven for years sure. Replacement, right? So, yeah, yeah, maybe there's some damage there, but I just don't. Well, and the important thing to focus on is obviously where you are now. Too. Yeah, like, not like oh, what happened because of. I'm like, it's kind of similar to if you like quit smoking cigarettes, right? Like you're not just going to be like, yeah, but what about all the tar? It's like, what are you going to scrape it out? Like you know, yeah, you just kind of legitimately your body renews itself every like seven years. I've heard that with smokers like that. at least. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've been smoke free now for yeah, I guess it'll be uh, seven years in. December. Other than weed. Yeah, other than weed. Yeah. But I usually like to vape it and actually honestly I'd rather here. I'd rather eat it. I'd rather Oh, have okay, a, that's interesting. That's I'd rather have uh, an edible. Like, I don't a small cookie because it's more physical for me. It's uh when I'm on the tools uh I don't start my day with an edible. I've never been a wake and bake guy even when I was smoking a lot and yeah. uh yeah, I just find that uh, by around 10 o'clock I feel the tools. So, like, on heavy days like that, I'll have, like, half a cookie. Oh, you're saying, like, uh, just physically it's straining like physically your muscles. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. So that takes that off, and I'm able to focus and be good enough. And then, like, around 2.30 on the way home, I'll have the other half a cookie, and then I'm not a time-thieving bastard for my kids. I can actually spend two and a half hours with them. As opposed to just like shower, eating, sleep. So do you go. just you just have a lot of experience with dosing with edibles then? Because for me, I find I enjoy them in a way, but I'm yeah. not in any way like I would never do it at work or anything like that because I'm just oh, you just don't know it knocks getting. you out. Like yeah, you're just not what you're, what you're for getting. me. I always want to sleep. I've had sativa edibles a couple times, and that was a bit better. But it's just so body 
heavy either way yeah. that yeah, it's no, just yeah. it takes me like to another place where i'm like it's enjoyable but i can't do anything <laughs> you can't do anything it's, you're probably having too much at yeah that point. yeah like i mean uh, we, we started fucking with the gummy bears at one point because we thought that was yeah, an easy way more they're like the gummy stuff they're the high intensity thing because it's like sugar is like one of the first things absorbed by the body in the blood and weird because like, i heard someone else tell me that uh, chocolate was the most intense because uh the fat metabolizes with your liver in a different way or some shit i think it's actually the sugar that <laughs> takes yeah. it like uh, I know when I was I, when I was doing amphetamines, uh, I would always uh, occasionally like take a parachute. I mean, it's like ingesting them lasted so much longer than smoking, and mm. it was just, it was a different feel to it, right? So, okay, so explain that parachute. A parachute um, is like taking a point uh, point one of a gram uh, and and putting it in a, in a, a zigzag, and then on what? What do you mean putting it in? Like spreading it, it on in a something? Zigzag. No, just. Putting it in oh, a zigzag folded. paper. Yeah, Sorry, paper. I thought you it's meant a zigzag paper. pattern. Sorry. No, no, no. Good Lord. <laughs> He's running end zones with mines. <laughs> no, I meant like, I thought you were like saying you'd put it on a piece <laughs> of paper or something and spread it out like in a zigzag. No, no, no. I don't, no, know. You, you I don't know what the fuck you're saying. the zigzag rolling paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, then, thank you. Yeah, from there, you uh, eat it, right? But it would not It would take a while to hit you. But if you put sugar into it, it would be a third of the time. Oh, weird. Because your sugar is like, that's what's absorbed by the bloodstream. Quick, uh, right? Makes sense, yeah. So the math would like, be riding along with the sugar. So if you needed to get really fucked up in a pinch, like, like, yeah, yeah, you want to have it quick, you would actually, you would crush that line up or that point. Yeah. And then you would get a glass of warm sugar water. Oh, okay. And you pour it in there and just mix it until it dissolves and then just pound that sugar water and boy, you're having some fun now. You sound like the guy from uh, Men in Black. You know, Igor? <laughs> or sugar, sugar water. Sugar you, water. you know what I'm talking about? In the first Men in Black, that guy gets all fucking his skin played taken by, over or whatever. Vincent Delfortio <laughs> played that guy? Was that Vincent Delfortio? Or was that? It, yeah, it fucking yeah. was. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, man. When he was, I guess, was he just an up and comer, or was it just a cameo type appearance? No, no, he didn't establish for a while. Weird, because yeah, it wasn't a, a huge role. No, he, he gets turned into a bug. Like the thing rips out of his skin before too long. There's li- literally that scene and maybe a couple others where he's kind of hunting them down, trying to find the the universe in the fucking cats. Yeah, that's you know. called a parachute. That's a sugar with a parachute. Interesting. No, like, no, yeah, I had never heard of that. Then there's things like a hot rail. That I well, you have. guys, you guys look a little confused. A hot rail, uh, a hot rail. <laughs> I know is, hot knives. Yeah, you know hot knives like, for sure. Yeah, burn your lip, fucking catch your buddy when he passes I know it's out. so stupid. Right? You got the ice cone, right? Like, oh, fuck. I never got so it. So yeah. many ways to do weed. <sighs> anyway, so a hot rail is like, oh look, my crystal meth pipe broke because it dropped and it's small piece of glass, right? Uh, okay, so we have a torch around. Usually, most uh, users will have a torch around. It's the quickest way to burn the gla- residue yeah, yeah. off and um, high intensity. High intensity, yeah. yeah. So we ended up um, we ended up cutting a line, and then you, as you're getting your torch, you're melting the end of your pipe down, right? Because the pipe's glass about five to six inches long, and uh, you get the one end smoking like red hot, and the other end's cool, right? Because it's not transferring the heat. Well, you can stick that end into your nose, the cool end, and then snort the line, and it instantly turns into smoke into your nasal cavity. Oh, that's kind of like doing dabs with weed, which I was telling my dad about earlier. Yeah, it's a, from cold to like instant hot. Yeah, right? and it just, well, and then, I think, vaporizes it in Yeah, with, well, uh, it's turning it into whatever. smoke yeah. as soon as it hits that hot glass, and then it's easier to rail, easier to smoke. No, but it's smoke in meth's case, but from what I've been told with dabbing shatter, it's actually vaporized when that happens. Oh, really? Someone told me that uh, doing a dab was technically vaporizing. I don't know. People can correct me on that. Speaking of which, <laughs> I didn't say this last time, but uh, you can now officially, uh, if you got a question or a comment or whatever, or a guest I should have on that, I honestly want to have on anyone who's interesting and a good conversationalist yeah, good conversation, and some, yeah. I can learn something You're or like, whatever. We're not just doing drugs and crazy other shit. Yeah. We're doing that too, but you no. Know, so. Um, so yeah, just chill podcasting. At gmail.com if you want to hit us up. I mean, this is not live yet, but hopefully uh, once this goes up. Yeah. One day. So um, what I was going to say is, well, first of all, when you talk about that and you're explaining something like hot railing, Mm -hmm. does it fuck with you? I get a bit of high off of it. Oh, okay. I do get a bit of high But it doesn't make you want to like run out and get it. No, no, I don't want to run out and get it, but it's just that simple. It's like nostalgia almost. Yeah. It, uh, I can, what I'm feeling, know that it's there and that's something that's happened. And then you can just let that anxiety just go. You don't have to hold on to it. 
Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. part of the... I struggle with that for sure with everything, but uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I just don't know how yet. <laughs> it's a muscle, man. It, yeah, it, 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 I'm working on it. The more you work it, the better it gets. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not trying to... Like, I don't have to deal with meth addiction, so I... To me, it's like I just get weird anxiety sometimes, you know, like... Like, it, it can really work for anything. You know? Yeah. Well, really I want to get more into meditation and, like, uh, self-awareness and living in the moment and all that shit. I try to make those conscious efforts in my brain, but... It's very hard sometimes, you know? It's easy to get caught up in this, that, or the other thing and just kind of... Yeah, there's a lot of cards stacked against all of us. But if you really want something, you'll have it. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's just like anything else. How much do you want it, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's just it. So. Um, okay, another question I had for you, unless you're sick of this topic, but um, I know you have kids or kid or kids? <laughs> Two. Two, okay. Yeah. Boy, girl. Well, you don't have one to disclose each, that. One of each. Uh, okay. I got the golden million-dollar ticket. It's because it's going to cost me a million dollars. Yeah, the million-dollar family. I used million to get that, family. too. Yeah. So, I have three, uh, but. Yeah. Uh, two and out. Yeah, friends. Oh. And you have boy, then girl. Yep. Million dollars. Yeah. That yeah. was the same as me back in the day, yeah. Yeah. Well, so. they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but day. I have three kids now, yeah, so yeah. I don't know what that does in that scenario. Yeah. Um, so I know, from my point of view, I have a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 2-year-old. And uh, I, would, I actually realized I should start peppering in more stuff about myself because if someone like I haven't said who the fuck I am other than like you might be able to discern that I'm a comedian and a couple other things. I'm but sure it'll all come out the wash later. Eventually. Yeah. Um, but that's a big part of my life. You know, I, I'm proud of being a father. And uh, we're definitely so going to have you on, on daddy issues, man. You're thank so close you, thank to here. You. In fact, we wanted to maybe surrogately come on over here one time and just record an issue. And that'd be it because our recording studio is. It's funny that you say that because when I uh, I tried to lock down this email, I was going to do just chill podcast because it's shorter and more straight to the point. I almost had it. I saw that it was available. For some reason, didn't lock it down. Then I put a post about me and Kyle with just chill podcast. Of course, when I go back, some bot stole it or whatever because, damn it. you know. So now I've got just chill podcasting. But when I got podcasting, I was like, oh. What if there was like an umbrella of like other shows that could, you know, it could be a network or some shit. So I was going to reach out to you guys because I felt bad that that shit happened to your fucking laptop. And yeah, we all felt real bad, especially if you're having me on as your guest, you know? Um, yeah, no, no, it'll be good. Um, it'd be weird yeah. if you just brought someone else over here and you're like, Oliver, can you just go upstairs? Yeah, can you like, just, <laughs> just take fuck off for yeah. a couple of hours? Yeah, fuck like, off. yeah no, because yeah. I, uh, I want to. Yeah, I think that would be a fucking fun yeah. time. Well, you do have the headphone and mic setup, which uh, does help immensely. We need another mic, though, so I don't know if we can. Well, Champ's probably got some gear he can bring over to you. Yeah, we got some stuff. It's yeah. US, but. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. definitely something we can. Uh, we'll look into that in the future. Crossover episode. Yeah, everybody loves a crossover. Crossover episode. Flintstones and Jetsons and shit. Yeah. Family no, Guy and Simpsons. They were fucking horrible. They were, they the were, Simpsons the Family Guy one was okay. pretty good. The only good Simpsons crossover was when Jay Sherman came to Springfield. The critic, yeah. Oh, yes. But it bothered I mean, me they made him yellow. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Same when you see, uh, cause with Hank Hill and them, they were in an episode in the stands, yeah, and, this, this, and weren't they skin color normal? Yeah, yeah. They were normal color. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, I drove fifteen thousand miles for this. And just, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. The football Hugh episode Hill. with. Uh, okay, shit, shit. I, I gotta get back to my point. Yeah, I have the three kids. Right. Ten, eight, and two, mm -hmm. and I'm already kind of like, oh, the teenage years are like right around the corner. So. And with that comes uh, drug use, sexuality, all the uh, puberty or whatever, yeah, all that shit. So do you, like, think you're going to be more of, like, a Nazi towards your kids when it comes no, to, like... No, um, absolutely not. I'm. You're going to be way open about talking about drugs yeah, and stuff? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to educate them. You're going to let them know your past, though? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I, I have to. That's, getting, that's the only... I wish my parents had done that with their addictions to me. Mm. Like, I didn't know about my dad's cocaine addiction until I was, like way into my 20s and already high you know what oh, I mean? okay so uh, yeah i wish you would have known and Shit. i'm not gonna change any part of the story for them i want them to make their own decisions but i want them to be so informed about everything that they'll make the right ones Okay. And like that's probably I'm, the smart way to go i yeah, would agree i'm not gonna be no don't because you tell somebody not to do something it's just gonna like you're just gonna want to yeah, but do you it, right like you could have those drug talks with them without specifically saying your you know particular history, which might be a little intense at whatever age. Like, where's yeah, your barometer for that? Like, when my when barometer you... for that will be probably right around 14, depending on on. I think Erica might get it a bit younger just because how she's handling herself. But Eddie will probably get that at 13 or 14. It'll depend. Yeah, it depends on kind of like yeah, who they're hanging out with and shit like that. Not just who like they're this hanging kid out with, just how they. How their temperament comes and mm. like what they can accept for knowledge. You know what I mean? Well, no, I get that because some kids struggle more with like the changes in their life and they might be more susceptible to like, ooh, an escape or like something that's like a, 
something I can lean on, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That, just, yeah. just I, educate them as much as I can. I feel like I knew your answer was definitely going to be talking to your kids, but there's definitely people who would probably say, like, I'm going to wait be. till they're 18 or... No, no, it's too late. <laughs> I uh, I think if your your best bet... Okay, so when I first came to Ottawa, I uh, came to live with my dad out in Constance Bay, and I had never lived with my dad, nor my uh, stepbrother, Jeremy, or half-brother. Um, brother, different mother, right? Never really knew him. He moved away at... He was, like, less than two. I was, like, 17. There's 15 years difference between the two of us, okay. right? So I arrived and recovered probably just as... Actually, just as he was starting to discover a lot of different drugs in high school. So, and I was like, yo, here's what you should know about this and that and this. And I'm not going to say don't, you know, do Molly, but Molly's going to make you happy for that night. But then your brain isn't going to produce its own happy for a long period of time. And you're, it's going to be tougher and tougher and tougher each time. So... Maybe you shouldn't do that. And Coke is just more. It's the same kind of a thing, too. Same imprint, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, you can do it. Don't. I advise maybe try it once on a New Year's thing. I just educated my brother Jeremy as best I could. I'm like, I'm not saying you don't. Maybe you probably should do. I just find it funny that you were like holiday specific. Yeah, holiday specific. New Year's. That's the Coke holiday. That is the Coke holiday. (laughs) New Year's Eve is fucking the Coke holiday. You kidding me? Happy New Year. Stay up and drinking. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Tell me, tell me a better. That's the night you want to stay up. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. Tell me a better Coke holiday, and I'll fucking. Yeah, I don't know what the meth holiday is, by the way. Don't even ask me. I don't even fucking know. But uh, June sixth, yeah, D Day. It's a hell day. No, yeah, <laughs> no, but I, I, um, I had that. I know that to be proven fact, like fourteen or fifteen, because uh, that's when I arrived, and my brother had a lot of questions about that, and he actually this weekend moves into his first house, and he's twenty five. He's got his own. Uh, he's working for the union now for five or more years. He, I was able to mentor him and just tell him what I had gone through so he didn't have to go through it. Nice. Because he's got a lot of friends right now who have gone the other way Take with him. Take him down that avenue, maybe. No, yeah, yeah, they were just like, done. And I'm all like, you can do it, but it'll be funnier to do it in your 20s when you're a little bit more established as opposed to doing it in your teens. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Exactly. Well, and your brain is still developing. Yeah. So they say you shouldn't even be fucking with weed in your teens, you know? I definitely agree with that, too. I don't. Think I do, too, and I definitely I, did fuck with I, weed yeah, in my teens. I did, but... too, and I, it, it made me angry. It Because it makes weed, is that natural happy euphoria and calm and the mellow. You should produce that naturally in your body, right? And you also produce a lot of the, the receptors for anger, right? Well, it blocks all those anger receptors. And then as soon as you don't have weed in there and it just floods through. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I just made sure that I was consistently happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's that, there's the addiction, right? And that's, well, it's not addictive. Yeah, no. um, yeah I don't you know okay that. okay with being lazy sometimes. I don't yeah. know that with weed I ever felt like hardcore physically addicted but it was a lifestyle that i was addicted to for sure also i i loved like being a teenager and being part of that counterculture and like everything that came along with the stoner vibe appealed to me i liked playing reggae you know i um it was about being open-minded i love it no i'm I'm sorry wait what, what song is that i don't like reggae i love it um i've never heard that no is it a reggae song i'm guessing yeah it's a reggae tune was on, Shit, uh, man, I should know that. Because I have been listening and playing to it since I was like 13. This yeah. mo's head is freaking me out. Yeah, if you put him in a little treasure box, he'd be like, hello, kids, it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah, but, so there's a gizmo head on yeah, my shelf. On your, it's on just shelf gizmo's here, head. Next to a, a peace sign. For us, a mogwai head. Um, yeah, I don't know. The irony I don't even remember where I got that. I think we had the whole doll, and then one of the kids broke it or some shit. And, and you're like, I can't get rid of Gizmo's hand. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Just start sticking that in their lunch. I'm a nerdy pack rat for like sure. I'm a nerdy pack rat. Nice. Yeah, man. Um, and uh, shout out to Vimy Ridge Brewing. Vim, yeah, sorry, it's a Vimy Brewing Company. Oh, sorry. Uh, I thought it was Vimy Ridge for some reason. No, no. Well, that's named after the battle. Okay. Right. Yeah. And uh, you guys go on down, check it out. Uh, uh, Loretta and Gladstone in, in Ottawa. They okay. make a delicious cream ale. Yeah, this is and, amazing. It's really and good. And the red is, I don't normally drink red a lot anymore, uh, but everything they put out of that place is just delicious. Yeah, I'd like to try yeah, some on yeah, tap. Come on down to that, man. Hopefully, we'll get that tap, show set up too. It's yeah. super great. Yeah, and I'm not a stout drinker, but if you guys are stout drinkers, their stout is like. Wow, an Irishman would be like, just be fine breakfast, mm, and just like do it to it. You know what I mean? Nice, it's nice. Good. 
But uh, yeah, head on down there, check them out. It's good. Yeah, well, I mean, and if they ever wanted to sponsor a podcast or something, you know, like I just use them <laughs> shout outs. Usually, they give me a, a sixer or so when we have them on. Oh yeah, I fully accept beer yeah. sponsorships. That's just paying me in beer for the guests or whatever. That yeah, like exactly. we got that fridge with fucking nothing in it right now, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit barren inside. Well, you heard it from me. Hey. It's either um, that or we get supported by meth dealers. I feel like we could almost, like, could we announce that show? Sort of. Obviously not a date, but, like, we well, could mention uh, that, right? Oliver, uh, well, let's, uh, let's kind of... Tentatively sort of... Let's go back and say that uh, there was a show done uh, earlier, a month and a half ago, and it was... Uh, it, was it was, like, what, June what, or July or something like It was like June that. or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, what did Janelle call it? Stringing You Along. And it was a good name. Yeah, it's a good name. Totally. Janelle Niles, awesome. Janelle Niles. Yeah, She's great lady. Uh, running that Eddie show. Running a little good room for herself. It's yeah. good. Um, and it's, her and her sister are just sweethearts. Completely. Yeah, they are. Um, so it was a musical act, comedy show. And I went to that. And it's incredible. It's viable. Uh, it's It was entertaining and topical. It was just great entertainment. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. My parents were, gonna, were at the first I'm one. I'm going to definitely be... Uh, Working towards having that in a weekend run at uh, any one of the beer rooms that I run, for sure. Like as an off chance or an off weekend. Yeah, I mean, I just... taking away from my p- program, but I'm going to do my damnedest to get you in on the other. No, because you know in I mean? a way, this was kind of Chris's inception that like just turned into a bigger thing. Because you mentioned at that show, I remember you come up to me yeah, and being like, like, this could be a fucking this thing. This could be a, either a fringe show for sure. Yeah. Or definitely its own one off. And then that we started talking about that amongst ourselves, like the musical comics or whatever. And we just did the second volume of the Stringing Along. Stringing yeah, sorry along. I couldn't make that. Uh, it, was, uh, it was really good again, yeah. yeah. And um, so I kind of locked down a few people. And it's people that I know are like pretty versed. Like Aaron just put out. I yeah. feel like I can say their names. and I'll, Yeah, Aaron Hill. They all confirmed to me. So Aaron Hill and Lewis Hill. They're yeah. brothers and they're both hilarious. And then Rory Gardner, yeah. who's many things. He's a country musician, and he's like a comedian and a Wrote TED children, talker. And read children's books. and Yeah, oh, great So many guys. hats. Like, pick one, Rory. Is it your cowboy hat? No, I'm just fucking kidding you, Roy. We love you, buddy. That's good. No, you're, and, and the I name I'm working on. The show. I want to help produce the show. I, I mean, this is something that easily is worth a $15 ticket on a Friday or a Saturday night. No yeah, problem. you'll get like, what is that? I mean, we're doing 15 minute sets each. Maybe have one of us feature at like 20, but it's going to be at least three songs per person. So, what yeah. it, it's like, tw- you're going to a dozen musical comedy songs and some stand up minced in through. Minced into it and talking about certain things. Yeah, no, it's it's great. No, we're going to work on this. And you guys, uh, you had your little catch name. What was it? Oh, yeah. So, I was thinking what because it ended show? up being four guys calling it uh, four dudes with G strings or something like that. And you could put in brackets like other strings also included or something like that. Something along those yeah. lines. Other chords will be here. Yes. Other strings will be and here. And we could somewhere. try to do like a funny photo shoot or something. Maybe not in G strings, but like <laughs> something, you know, a little bit. I think bit less like... is more, Oliver. I think less is more <laughs> on that one. I'm not going to go He's with like, that. No one wants to see that. Um, <laughs> shit. Someday yeah, no. Like Fuck, man. I'm kids, excited. Right? Like a... I'm right. really excited. It's it's crazy how shit no, just works good. out. Look, like, for that for, for, look for that for in the fall, guys. Yeah, man. We're okay, cool. Try for Thanks. that for the fall. November's um, a great time to pitch shows like that. What was I going to say? We've gone through a lot of the shit that I was going to uh, mention. Um, okay, one thing that I, I'm trying to have a couple of things that are kind of like, you know, traditions when you're starting a new thing. So one thing I told you, I try to get guests to add something to the wall. Yeah. Have you already concocted that? No, yeah, I haven't. He's I just working didn't on know it. What I was oh yeah, gonna... I you could put it up after or yeah, now. Yeah, sure. It doesn't matter, man. If you want to throw it up now, I don't care. Um, Cryptonesia. The other thing I was going to say though is um, don't smoke meth. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you didn't write it. I didn't okay. um, <laughs> yeah, feel free to write whatever the fuck you want. But uh, fuck, what was I going to say? God. Oh yeah, I asked Kyle what would be your favorite, like if you could have any superpower. And given the wall of inspiration, or you could come up with your own. I do think it's kind of a cool question to ask. The force. That's the a, instant push. Like the, that's the a whole file just, folder like, of fucking powers. Boom, though. exactly. Fucking, you can't limit me to one. You're I'm not be saying like, be Superman. I'm saying pick flight or like pick X-ray oh, okay, vision. Okay, like okay. one power. Like one, nail it down. Yeah. Uh, it would be telekinesis then. Nice. Yeah, it would be telekinesis. That would just, like, you could fuck with people so much. Yeah, that. yeah, totally. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I think uh, I think Professor Xavier has uh, got, it, got it right with that one. No, man, Xavier is only telepathic. He oh, has telepathic zero is tele- zero. Kinesis. Sorry. Okay, kinesis. My, my, yeah, I'm kinesis. a huge X-Men fan. Kinesis Jean Grey has both. Yeah, that's it. Um, and when she's Phoenix, she's, like, fucking next level. Yeah. Did you watch the third one? 
The newest one, you mean? Third one? No. no, I will yeah, eventually, yeah. but I heard so much fucking yeah. garbage about it, and I, I was... enjoyed like where they went with that timeline, like just how they were able to. Oh, look, uh, we bet the timeline. This isn't our Wolverine anymore. <laughs> you know, like at the Days of Futures Past. Yeah, that was the one where they kind of yeah. retconned a lot of the shit that people hated about X3, where yeah. Cyclops and Professor X both died weirdly. And then yeah. they're like, oh, they're back, and everyone's kind of back that you like from the old trilogy, but we're also got other actors playing them now, too. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The stupidest thing about that fucking new trilogy, whatever it is, is that it's supposed to take place, the first one, in the 60s. Yeah. Days of Future Past is in the 70s. Uh, Apocalypse is in the 80s, and now the newest one is supposed to be in the 90s. How fucking old are these people? Like, um, what's his name? Magneto? He should be, like, fucking... Dead? Oh, what's his name? 80s. Michael Fassbender, right? If he yeah. looks like that in the 60s, 30 years later, he still looks pretty much the fucking... What, maybe 10 years of real aging at the most? Yeah, clean living. But every clean character. Living like, come on. Magnetic why did one of these guys get, like, diabetes or something? <laughs> like... Not, I guess they're mutants. They got powers. And yeah, stuff. right. Like, it's fucking weird. Wolverine right? doesn't age, right? I just finished reading the origin comic that was released in 2001. That was uh, pretty, pretty good. Oh, when novel they first there. announced, or that was when they first made him like James Howlett, yeah. and they said that he had bone claws, and they yeah. gave him like a definitive. That pissed a lot of people off. Oh, for sure. Because a lot of people love the fractured memories and the Weapon X. You'll never really know. Like, yeah, yeah. They were who just is like, he? Question like, this. And then, this was him, but then he lost all that. Which you know, they kind of did with like Origins. What, the movie? Itself, like the movie, which was Let's not horrible. even talk about yeah, that. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Deadpool, one. like... Deadpool, yeah, the fact that he needed to make a mention of it in the Deadpool movie of how bad it was yeah, speaks it was, for itself. Yeah, it was super great. The but, first... Uh, I'll give it to the first uh, 20, 25 minutes of that movie. is pretty cool. When yeah. you're showing Wolverine and Sabretooth fighting through all these different wars. wars and, it was yeah. like, all right, and then it just goes off the rails Yeah, it hardcore. totally does. Totally does. Um, shit, man. Okay, well, that's a pretty... Uh, I wasn't expecting you to say telekinesis. Why? Just to prank people or like... I guess it's really powerful. Yeah. You can pretty much do anything at that point. I also, like, a Colossus, like that metal fragmentation and that superpower of strength would be Mike. Yeah, he can make like, his skin into organic yeah, steel. Organic steel yeah. and stuff like that. Just, uh, it's what I always neat. liked about Colossus was that his character's like, he could kick the shit out of anyone, and yet he's like a painter and a pacifist for the yeah. most part. He's it's a nice. farmer. Well, he's a farmer, right? Farmers have been known to ones of peace, right? He grew up farming for his parents or something in Russia. In Russia. Yeah. And he has a sister, too. You know her? No, you don't. I didn't know how nerd you are, but no. um, his sister is named. Uh, well, the character's name is Magic. Like when she gets her powers and all that, I think with a K. But I Ilona or Ilania, something like that. Rasputin. Okay. It's his little sister, and he called her Snowflake. She was real little when most of the stories were going on, and then she gets taken into like uh, the fucking dark dimension or one of those places uh, yeah. by this demon called Belasco. Okay. When she's like eight. And in there, she ages to the point where she's like now late teens, kicking ass with the demon sword, whatever it's called, the soul sword, I think it's called, or something like that. Okay. And uh, then she comes back, but in real time, she it's only been like a year or whatever. Wow. So Colossus loses his eight year old sister, is like devastated, and then she comes back like this ass kicking demon, and I think she's kind of demon. Sort yeah, of, she's are, trying to like contain you who, it. You are who you choose to be in contact with, right? <laughs> well, she had little goat legs at one point when she transformed, like, and got more powerful. I don't know. Anyways, for the non-comic people, this is probably very boring. But <laughs> yeah, the, you anyway. might as well stop listening to my podcast because this is going to happen. We're going to talk about weed. Don't We're do it. We'll talk, talk about, about more drugs. More drugs. Peyote buttons. You ever do peyote buttons? I did peyote buttons. Did you actually? Yes. Shit, man. We're so, talking about comics. Sorry, this is one thing I actually wrote down. Not because it's necessarily particular to you, but it's just a cool thing that we've been talking about lately. Our friend group. There's, have you ever heard of the four humors? No. Have you? It's like an ancient concept or something. But I watched, actually Ben, my older brother, he showed me a video. It was by these guys uh, from Cracked Magazine, but they had like a, a YouTube cha channel or whatever. Right. They're in a diner and they talk about the four humors and how it's a concept that in every group of four, there's always these four roles that will people will fall into. And lately we've been dissecting it because we, we went to Ninja Turtles because that's one of the groups they mentioned. They mentioned Seinfeld. They mentioned they put them all. Fantastic Four. It doesn't matter. You can always They're do always it. They're always there. Um, so with us, we realized even further now with the Ninja Turtles, stay with me, everyone has their predominant Ninja Turtle that's like, that's you for sure. Everyone yeah. has one of the other two that's like a close second. Then everyone has a distant part of you that's like, yeah, a little bit. And then everyone has one that like basically doesn't apply to them at all. Right. Anyways. So, like, the, the four energies. You're calling it the four brothers? What were you the four humors is the what they call humors. it. Okay. I, I, I'm butchering this, I'm sure. But, like, I for my breakdown, I feel like I'm a Mikey top. Because I, be, I feel like most comedians probably are. It's like humor is always kind of the first thing on my mind. A jokester attitude. Joke when I'm uncomfortable, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
Right, well... You might have a different breakdown, but anyways, it's something to think about. I thought yeah, it was Yeah, like cool. the four personality types, though. And there's right. one that won't apply to you. I guarantee you, you'll find, like, one of those... You know, Mikey's the Joker. Yeah. Donnie is the the gadget guy, someone who's very oriented in, in the intellectual side of things. Yeah. Leonardo is very honor-driven and, like, leading, keeping things on course. And yeah. then Raphael is very emotional, outlash kind of, but still has a good heart, usually. Yeah. Um, it really does work. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know well, why I brought this up, but think about it. I swear to God, you'll find a breakdown for everybody in your life. And if you are all four of those things, then you should seek psychiatric help. If no. you actually think you're all four Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yeah, if you think you're all four Ninja Turtles, please. I've thought of, have you thought about a vasectomy? Or you I already have one. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. That's a good topic then. Because I've thought about it and, and Kelly's definitely After mentioned After three, it. he's thought about it. That's a sharp guy. Sure. Well, okay. To preface that, I have two kids from uh, when I was married, and that was definitely we were trying to have kids, but then things don't work out, you know. Yeah. And uh, I met my fiance, my now fiance Kelly, and we have a little guy now. So I honestly didn't think I was gonna have another kid, but when we met, she was kind of like, "Hey, I dated a guy for like nine years, and we basically broke up because we came to like a front where it was like he didn't want to have kids, and she did, and they were both like, "Hey, that's not gonna work." So. She kind of like very early on was like, okay, look, I, we don't have to have a kid tomorrow, but in the next few years, I got to have at least one kid. And she was always very clear one is enough. And she's a great stepmom to my kids. So she kind of has yeah, three yeah, kids, so that's right? Good, yeah. So, um, but yeah. No, that's cool. No, uh, it had to do with, uh, well, I, we stopped it too because um, I knew after the second one, my wife was not going to stop. Mm, she wanted to brood? No, she would have just, it was entirely up to me. It was entirely, she just looked over me like after a six hour labor with one push for our second child, six hours, one push. Wow. It's like alien, you know, like laying the eggs. It's like, that was so easy. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I was Googling Dr. Weiss. Like, oh, look at this shit. The next day I had filled out the online form and like, yeah. She starts having is. babies in like five months. You're like, that wasn't long enough. No, no, no. But <laughs> like, pumping well, them up they, faster. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was so. Three years to the day of my son's birth, I had my vasectomy done. And, so. Okay, so that was my line of questioning then because I've thought about it. It seems smart. It seems easy, whatever. But I've talked to a couple of people that kind of made me a little freaked out and played to my fears. Like one guy told me that he got it done and only a few times, but he's had a couple instances where he would ejaculate and it was like it didn't feel right. He told me it, it kind of like pinched or something like that. I don't know. Did he have his thumb up his butt when he was doing it? Was he... <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess this is just one guy. The other thing I should explain is I'm not huge like on going to get surgery that I don't have to get. Dude, you know this what I mean? is a like, procedure where they were going to have you in and out of that office in less than 45 minutes. Not and... when you have massive anxiety. People told me Dude, you can smell you them downers. burning your shit. Oh, no, no, no. Weiss is... I had that concern, too. Of like, am I going to smell my own ball hair? And then, Buddy like, told me he... skin, and then all of a sudden, like, the vacuum is on, and I didn't smell anything. And it was like, how quick? Like, like from the time you sit in the chair and they're the like, time I got in and like in dropped and then laid down. I'm like, am I looking at a picture of a fucking cathedral forest? Is this cathedral forest? Why? He's like, yes, it is. Good eye. Okay. It's going to sting <laughs> just a little bit. I'm like, what? It's going to sting. It's like slap. And it like, that's the freezing, right? The freezing oh. hurts most of anything. Like the little needle. Where do they and shoot like, that? In your balls. <laughs> Yeah, shit, you're both, man. <laughs> okay, like, I don't think this is happening. No, no, so, no, totally. Don't even worry about it because you don't even like it's. It's like okay, you ever hit one of those like elastic bands that that like from that, that are no, no, just feel... wait, just, just hear me out. Just hear me. Out. The elastic bands that are around broccoli, you know, those big thick ones, you know. Yeah, that's... just wind one up on your balls, and that's that. You only have to do that once because then you don't feel it after that. I don't just know. once, just maybe once to if be it's like, precise, like oh, it if it's is. that level of it's, pain, it's super precise. Okay, but I'm taking very viscerally what you just said, and if I think about a little flick, the thing I hate about getting hit in the nuts is you feel all fucking like. Pinky. Yeah, but it's not like no, it's not. So pinky you don't get any of that. that. This is just like a pinch. Okay, like okay. Oh, God, you. the anxiety though going into that would fuck me up. I'm no, but they you. give you down. I'll be like, they're gonna miss, in. and it's gonna go in no, my no, dick hole. Or they will not. Vice has done over fifty thousand procedures. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you have a guy, then that does maybe make me feel a little bit better. Fifty thousand procedures. Like basically, like, he I only botched four. Like, cause that, there's always that. <laughs> you never know. Well, there's not necessarily. He hasn't botched the procedures, but there are what they call recanalization, which means like your sperm are so goddamn strong that they're uh, like, okay. somebody burnt down the bridge. Oh, let's <laughs> make a new bridge. <laughs> And they punch a new hole through your vest difference. And they're like, we're Jesus. fucking free now. <laughs> we're the strongest fuckers alive. Oh, and then man. you have another kid. Yeah. So that's, 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 that's a thing. And I that's one that. in 10,000. 
happens to them. Okay, so One it's pretty 10, rare. Yeah. It's pretty rare. You know what it happened to? I Does think it hurt? They, Do you feel them breaking down the... No, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I've been tested recently, but I'm pretty... Yeah, no. Okay, sure. I guess we'll leave on... Uh, what? I guess I'm a Star Wars fan, and we've been geeking out. Yeah, we didn't talk about Star Wars at all. at all. And we'll just... We can either you can either shut it off right now or you can like listen to the Star Wars blab. I'm just saying. What are we talking? Gonna the happen. new we're trailer. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna new trailer. Uh, whatever. New Only trailer watched it once. Or the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. I'm pretty excited for. That should be cool. And I'm also very excited that they you know got you and back to do a series for Disney Plus. That's huge. Yeah, that's, that had, that's, they were talking a movie for a while. And they the, were, yeah. and, then, and then Solo flopped because Solo's freaking actor was not Han Solo. You know what I mean? Wow, and, like, see, we could get started right there because I was the last guy who really didn't want to see Solo. I waited fucking till it was on video for like eight months. I waited till it was on video. And we thought I it was fucking it. good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to trash it. It's like, movie. all I feel like saying is you try and be Han Solo. Yeah. To fucking Let's any hater. It. It's like, did he did a good job. And Lando was good. Lando was great. Like, so they needed to have Lando Donald and Glover. Han of equal skill. You know what I mean? And just so you really Lando, didn't dig the Han guy, eh? No, I just didn't. I, just I thought didn't he had that kind enough. of like I just didn't see cavalier of attitude that Han had. He kind of... He got the look in the face, too. Right? There's one scene when he's talking to the girl in the change room where I was like, oh, shit, he's delivering those lines like Harrison Ford, but without being like a straight carbon copy, but very, very close to the, the yeah. source material. And I, I just found like older Han to be darker, and maybe that's what you know time and battle does and, and treachery of the galaxy, and maybe it doesn't make him a little bit more devil may care, I shoot first, but I didn't see that in in this character and maybe i'll go back and watch it again and check it out i did like what the vision of they were showing of uh of the greater what the empire was doing what how Corellia was and a yeah. lot of the it was cool to see yeah, some to see deep the, cuts nerdy see, shit yeah exactly. and did you see buddy from um a new hope those yeah, guys they were, got his yeah there's a off. lot of easter eggs in there Ponda baba yeah, i think yeah, is his name yeah yeah, it's like you'll be dead. Yeah, okay. Like yeah, my yeah. friend doesn't <laughs> like you either. Yeah, exactly. you know, and then he fucking cuts his, cuts arm, his off. arm off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, it's been a long time and since they, I watched you know, that they, too. But Spice Mines of Kessel, you know, they they covered a lot of play, like things that are yeah. in the world that was like yeah, shout it's, outs. It's, yeah, I, don't get me wrong, I just didn't agree with Han there. Woody Harrelson's good in everything too. I gotta That's, throw yeah, that out there. Exactly. Right, he was. So. I liked his character, and yeah. I liked that the uh, bounty hunter that was trying to kill him or whatever it was ended up being a chick. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Not yeah. to say chicks can't be bounty hunters. I just didn't fucking. Didn't see Aura that. Singh was in the, uh, you know her from the prequels? Yeah. She's that white chick with like, uh, I think she's a Twi'lek. God, we're getting hardcore nerd. We are getting, we are getting right <laughs> in there. She was there though. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I'm, I haven't been that impressed with the newest trilogy. Um, Force Awakens, there was parts where I was like tearing up. Because yeah. I'm just a nerd, and I was yeah. like oh, excited or whatever. Yeah, well, but yeah, at that on a rewatch, point, I'm like, yeah, on a rewatch, what's it was, up with uh, another planet weapon? Come on, yeah, yeah. make it a big ship this time or something. Fuck. Yeah. And they're like, we can't. Our ships are already as big as we could possibly conceive. Them, yeah. <laughs> well, we can't up our own gigantic fucking ships. I like, didn't mind the last Jedi. I thought it was. Uh, I mean, except the casino. I didn't scene hate was it. Neat. I didn't hate. Yeah, it, that but, detracted for sure. Yeah, but the whole like, like Rose and Finn thing was a little bit weird. Yeah, but whatever. It was fun. I mean. <laughs> In, in essence, I, didn't, I had a good time. It's the nice they were fle- freeing the slave yeah, children, kids you know, and, and yeah, the one yeah. kid had the force at the end. That was cool. Yeah, that was neat. I didn't hate it. What I hated was milking a giant space animal was definitely not necessary because my brain, it's not even like, it's not even like it doesn't make sense for Luke to maybe have to do that, but it's like, why show it? And my brain instantly was out of the movie because I was like, that's probably like a, like a fucking $30,000 titty milking scene that, that <laughs> somehow got past like a script editor as being like no no you're gonna want this you're gonna want link uh you're luke gonna want the, you're, you're gonna, gonna want luke with fucking green just titty milk, milk his, all over his, his fucking face. <laughs> you, you're gonna have him like he's milking a cow and he just doesn't give a shit i couldn't and then also the leia thing too oh with her in space yeah because it was like everyone knew leia was force sensitive yeah. you could see that in jedi yeah. and shit but None of the people we had seen, like Luke or any of those fuckers, had ever flown around in fucking zero oxygen after getting blown out of a cockpit. And then it was also, I think they probably made those decisions before she died. But because she had died, it was kind of like when you're watching, you're like, maybe you should have just let her go. Because this kind of yeah, would have been a perfect sort of, yeah, I'm anxious I don't to know. See. And now I'm she's instead going to be in the next one. How much CGI are we going to get? Yeah. Uh, the CGI know. they did with... Uh... Young Rogue Leia, Rogue, Rogue, Young Leia, it was incredible, and I, I think it was good. Rogue One, I was, was more incredible. impressed by the Imperial dude. Um, yeah, oh, uh, what's this fucking Tarkin? Is that his name? Grand Moff? Tarkin. Yeah, 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 he's he that convinced me way more. I, I don't thought think Leia they should had... have got in really close to you know Peter Kershing. They shouldn't have got like 
Yeah, they did a couple weird angles. I couldn't think the back ones were great. Like the him walking through foreground and stuff like that was great. Yeah. But as soon as they did a face shot of him, like, nah, you got me. I see it now. It kind of looked it. like that uh, Scrooge animated movie that I think Jim Carrey was the voice yeah. for. It was yeah. very similar to that. Yeah, yeah. very similar. Like yeah. a better version. It's getting better and better, though. Yeah. Oh, oh. it is. Yeah. 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 Well, but, like the fact that you have those face swapping video things now, and those look like almost seamless. And that's just on fucking Instagram or something. Like imagine when they're putting that on the big screen. Yeah, pretty wild. Good lord. Cleaning shit up in post production. That's yeah. creepy though. Imagine that, like, basically, if you put enough. I'm assuming you have to be a celebrity who does a lot of media for them to have enough clips to fuck with your face. Yeah, they would have to have To make enough, it look uh, realistic. Yeah, they would have to have enough, like, raw data to make you look like yeah, somebody else. The, the upcoming Irishman by Scorsese that's coming out, that's got a lot of De Niro and those guys, like, a lot of spanning young to old. Okay, so the, yeah, okay, so my dad's talking about the aging stuff that they're doing. Like when they made Tony Stark look like he was a teenager again and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that's bring true. it back digitally. Reverse. That's getting better. I wonder and better. if they can, they're going to be able to do that with like, I heard there's like a Sopranos prequel coming. Oh, yeah. But he's yeah. dead, right? So well, I know I'll he's take dead. Totally. And... They could take him as a kid. I, I want to know Tony's dad's story. Fuck, I want to know that story. You know what I mean? That, that, and how big pussy came to be involved because he's a little bit older. I never and... watched Sopranos. No? Yeah, no. check that out. I heard nothing one. but amazing things, yeah. but oh, too much then, content. And everybody's like, oh, at the end, uh, it just sucks. They just cut us out. I'm like, no, we were killed. Yeah, we, fade we, to black. We were the ones fade to black. We didn't hear it. The bullet went through our heads. Yeah. Oh, because, shit. Yeah, That's it was deep because I did hear about that. I yeah, know what we, you're talking we about. Don't, it was us. If you just look at it, they're like, how we're seeing things and how we're seeing things and we see the guy going you're to like the bathroom. You're like the fly on the wall. We're the fly on the you wall. You never realized yeah. you were just the guy in the gang. We are the guy in the oh, gang. Oh, shit. And they got sick of our bloodlust. That's a like, good way to look at it. That was it. And then we're done. And then we don't get to hear the rest of the story because... Because you're dead. Yeah, yeah just like dead. life. Yeah, and it, it, like that. It just ends. That's crazy. And they're like, what happened to Tony? No, Tony just kept on being a bad person. He just yeah. kept on going. But until his, until he had we, a heart we attack in Italy or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so. Shit. I was going to say with the face swapping stuff, though, imagine you're an actor or an actress and then they can like make you look like you're in a porno, basically, right? <laughs> they can already do that with like fucking pictures, obviously. But like yeah. once they can take some sound clip of someone getting fucked in the ass or whatever and then they put your face from whatever clips, like that's fucked up. The, people are yeah, going to be afraid is. to be celebrities, maybe, because of what they'll be capable of after a certain point. Or they'll love it. <laughs> You're shaking your head like, no. There will always be people who want to be celebrities. Yes, there will always yeah, be people Yeah, that's true. There will always be, be people who want to be celebrities. But I think some of them will be afraid of that because it's kind of a fucked up concept to have someone... Oh, yeah, we, we'll call it, man. Anyways, yeah, okay, we got to do a high five at the end. That's got a, oh, he's got a phone that call coming in. This is a great success, and thank you for watching, and yeah. keep watching other things and all that stuff. With, yay, Star Wars. And uh, listen to his podcast and come out to the shows. Yeah, all right. for sure. Thanks, guys. See you. Oh, hot headphones. Yeah.